Welcome to Equipped Agronomy Podcast. We bridge the gap between seeding equipment and agronomy. This is presented to you by Borgo Industries. My name's Curtis DeGoyer and I have here with me a Mr. Jeff Strukoff. Good day, people. Hi, Jeff. Hi, Curtis. How are you doing today? I'm, I'm good. That's I'm good. good. Lovely. Yeah. Yeah. The, uh, the sun is shining. It's warm. I shouldn't say that. It might not be warm when this comes out. I probably shouldn't tell everybody that I have a chiropractor appointment from catching so much fish on a nice warm day. Put my back out. Yeah. Well, it's it's going well no matter what. Today, what are we going to talk about, Jeff? I think we're going to talk about some of the things that we've done with regards to row spacing. Row spacing is a big one. Yeah. In both canola and wheat. Canola and wheat. I think we will probably be able to potentially even dabble into some other crops. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. We'll give it a go. But canola and wheat is is some stuff on row spacing where we have some experience. We've done some trials on it. And I mean, obviously the row spacing question comes up quite a bit, I would say, from customers, dealerships, because it has such a impact on cost of the equipment, right? 10-inch spacing and, and horsepower spacing. requirements. Horsepower requirements, hydraulic flow even a little bit. Seabed utilization. Trash management. All sorts of different things come into play. There, there is. And there is. And, and there's some of that stuff, especially on the economic side as far as, you know, horsepower requirements and the upfront cost of the equipment that, you know, agronomically doesn't, I would say, play a role in that. But we, we want to focus on what's, you know, what that crop is going to do, how it's going to perform the best. And I think that's as much as we can do to see if the, if there is benefits, if they offset some of these other hurdles or other characteristics or, or What's the word I'm looking for? Not characteristics, but yeah, you're just shaking your head. I'm, okay, I'm lost, it's, Curtis. I'm sorry. I don't you know sure where I mean? you're going with that. The thing. agronomic yeah. side versus the equipment side. Okay. So that's why it's on our radar. We get the question quite a bit. Uh, so we set up some trials. We've got our two drills behind our leading 7550 cart, both single knife. So we have a 10 inch spaced with banders, and then we have a 12 inch spaced with banders, both three quarter inch openers. And that's how we do our comparisons. And so you're not going to get a better side by side than than that. No, you've isolated all the variables. The only thing that you're testing is row spacing. Row spacing. And that's what we uh, that's what we wanted to do. And, and so we set that up. And like you mentioned already here, we've done it on cereals, uh, specifically wheat, and then also in canola. You know, those are obviously our two main crops that we're, well, that we always kind of dabble in, right? You know, right off the get-go, I would say that there is more of a perceived benefit Maybe not even perceived. On cereals, though. Cereals should respond better to narrow row spacing. Uh, That's the general consensus. Yeah. You know, I looked up the the world wheat record, winter wheat, Mm -hmm. and they're not talking about 10-inch and 12-inch spacing when it comes down to growing Mm -hmm. big, big big wheat. Does New Zealand still hold the record? Uh, No. Actually, they just lost it. It went back to somewhere in England, I think. Uh, Oh, really? Yeah. It was 200 and, oh, oh, man, what was it? 260, almost 264 bushels. On what row spacing? Well, from what I could see, it was either five five to six inch. Yeah. I had had actually called one of the world record holders there. Oh, this would have been eight years ago or something like that. And I said... What row spacing are you on? And at that point, he was at five and a half. But yeah, I don't think it differs. Or It's somewhere in that range. It's not 10 mm-hmm. to 12, right? So, you know, I think with that in the back of your mind, it kind of sets a bit of a, not an expectation, but you know, we're not going to hit those high levels unless we're, they're not going to hit those high levels at 10 or 12 from their experiences, right? Now, of course, when you talk about something like that, it comes back to these other aspects of row spacing with that being trash flow. How could we get through? Uh, and a lot of those cases are pre-working the soil, right? Mm-hmm. So I, I think, you know, that's that's really good to keep in mind, right? And we have mm-hmm. to be mindful of it. So what, we, okay, going back to what we set up on what we were looking at. So back in 2019, uh, we just did that one in wheat. That was our kind of first dive into it there. Our results came back. We had the same plant stand, actually, between 10 and 12, and this is side by side. But the 10-inch spaced actually did come out a little bit higher yield. Plant stand the same, a little bit higher. Statistically higher. Statistically higher. And I think, yeah. oh, what was it? It was it was four bushels, five bushels, something mm-hmm. like that. But it was significant. And, and, you know, every single rep, it all came the same thing. And, mm-hmm. you know, so why why is that? Why would we be seeing that little bit of a bump? Is it everything to do with... Seabed utilization? Does it have to do with what else? More capture of sunlight? Uh, quicker row closure? Uh, quicker row closure. You know, I, I think there's some of that stuff where you can make the argument for narrow row spacing is 
is better, right? Now, let's go to 2020 now. 2020 was a, a good growing year. We had mm -hmm. some pretty good yields on that one. So on wheat, we actually ended up 10 and 12, same yield, same yield. The difference that kind of popped up in 2020, 12-inch spacing had lower plant stand. Ended up lower. So if you think about it, you're going 20% higher concentration of plants in that seed row. So would you say that there was more interplant competition then? That would be a heck of a theory, I would say. Yeah, um, Yeah, of course. I mean, it's going to be competing uh, with that, with each other, I should say. And that's a uh, another thing that kind of came out of that year, same yield, 10 and 12, but the wild oats, you could pick up right where the 12-inch spacing, driving 60 miles I down the road. I distinctly remember that, actually. There was those strips on 12-inch spacing, wild oat heads, you know, later on the season, they poked those ugly heads up over top of the crop. You could just yeah. pick them out, right? And that goes, you know, that kind of speaks to the weed competition proponent of this whole row spacing talk, in which it's tough to get a good economic number on that, right? When you, you know, when you talk about 10 versus 12, there's a poof, this, this is much more to buy this drill, right? Poof, it's this much yield, you'll gain this much or, or won't gain this much. But it's the, the weed buildup. And now with resistant weeds, group ones, group two resistant wild oats, how do we combat that with another equipment side of, of that conversation? A cultural practice. Is that what the word is? Cultural I don't or? Know. I do know that the, our provincial weed specialist has done quite a bit of work with a reduction of uh, weed resistant biotypes to group one or group two yeah. by having narrower row. And he actually preaches uh, narrower row spacing to manage resistant groups of weeds. Just because you achieve row closure that much quicker. And w w like you were just talking about, you could drive by those plots at 60 miles an hour and pick out the yeah. ones that were on it 12 was... inch. Just by the level of wild oat competition. Yeah, it was very, very, uh, yeah, stood out. Okay, so now so wet year, same yield. Okay, so now we go to 2021, much drier year mm -hmm. uh, when we're doing those trials. So again, though, the same yields, 10 and 12, same yields came, showed up. 12 inch spacing, though, again, had lower plant stand in that year. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and, you know, a significant amount. I think it dropped from, uh, what was it there, 33 down to under 30s or something like that. So... You know, we had in that still up there though. square foot. Yeah, no, it was still it was still fine. We obviously mm. still had enough plants there to produce, you know, as high a yield as I would say the moisture allowed for that year. Mm -hmm. So uh, again, that year, did we see any weed competition really firing up? Uh, we just didn't see anything firing up that year. <laughs> <laughs> now, that was a twenty one was a rough one on cereals. It uh, was dry. There is there is no doubt about that. So speaking of that, then so dry. What about areas? Like I, I, I feel like there's more, I would say, 10-inch space drills. We'll, we'll talk specifically in Saskatchewan at the moment, but like northeast Saskatchewan versus, let's say, southwest. Now, is there something to be said for which is better in a drier area versus a wetter area? That's a question. That is a question. I don't know. Because some of the conversation around that is, well, if you have narrow row spacing – you know, you're getting more tillage, right? You're, you're moving more soil, which has the potential to have more moisture loss. So mm -hmm. when you get into dry areas that are typically more dry, moisture being a very, well, moisture is dependent, you know, we're dependent on moisture in every location here in Western Canada, but specifically more, more so even down there. You know, kind of the argument there is, well, 12 inch spacing will actually outperform 10 inch because you're not disturbing as much soil and then you're going to use more for the plants. I've actually talked to guys too that they feel that they get more air movement through the canopy so they get less incidence of disease. But that, Whether that's true or not, I don't well, know. I'm just, it's. Well, there's no doubt that would a, happen. Suggested anyway. But what crop specifically was that though? Uh, those are primarily pulse crops. Pulse crops. Chickpeas, lentils. Yeah. yeah. So typically areas like that, you know, they can grow better pulses than let's say up north. Northeast, where it's a little bit more. Yeah, technically, they should concentrate on pulses and leave the canola to us guys in the north <laughs> and quit dabbling in the canola down south. Just it was a wild year last year. It was totally flip flop last year, wasn't it? There, yeah. Like, as far as yeah, we were pretty dry up here. So, so I guess maybe that's more what's going on. Ten inch is more popular up here. Let's say to utilize some more of the moisture versus you know down in those areas that are growing more pulses potentially to have more airflow through because we know mm -hmm. that there's less weed competition on twelve inch spacing. So obviously the canopy doesn't close as quick. And we're only talking like a little bit of, you know, 10 to 12. It's only two inches, you say. But that is like almost like a weak difference, it seems, to cover that yeah. spacing. So it we actually used that one prototype drill a couple of years ago. I can't remember the millimeters, but it was actually narrower than 10. 
And just that slight difference, you could noticeably you see notice that it. as well. Even so it was just such a minute difference, narrower, but you could tell. It, it shows up. So, you know, the weed aspect of the of row spacing is is a big one. And I think maybe that one's been, I would say, almost slightly overlooked. Uh, maybe. But it's definitely coming more into the forefront with as resistant weeds come out and yeah. uh, on that side of it. Now, on the narrow row spacing, higher seedbed utilization, you know, on, on that side of it, it should give the, the wheat crop and the cereals in general a bigger bigger bump or more potential for yield anyway. Mm. Um, going back to that conversation about where the highest you know yields are growing, they're not using 10 or 12 inch spacing. So what about on, okay, so now canola. Change so gears. Let's, let's talk about change canola. gears because that is a totally different beast. We know that canola can can fill out and, and fill in that space. So in 20, we didn't have it in 2019, uh, but in 2020, we said, geez, we got to do this in canola too, right? And a wet year, 2020, we went from in that 10 to, to 12 inch, no difference in, in yield. <laughs> there was no difference in anything. Plant stands are, are, are nothing. It was just canola fills in, it fills in quicker. It branches. You can branches change the physiology quick. of the plant. Yeah. And I, yeah, absolutely more. Yeah. More branching, more room to branch, the That's wider the road space. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So then we took it one step further though. We had a 10 inch space drill. We're comparing to 12, but we could actually put that one to 20 inch spacing. So we said, hmm. Let's really give it on canola, 10 inch to 20 inch spacing now. And that had a lot to do with, you know, a lot of planters out there and stuff are, are wider. So when we did that, yield, again, exactly the same. Canola just does what canola does, right? Good wet year, had time to branch out. The one thing we did see, though, for sure was maturity. The time for it to come to maturity was longer. Oh, Even yeah. though the plant stands actually were the same. And, and I think that speaks to your point of plants just having to... More, more room, more room to branch, more potential for flowering. And then there was a few management issues we encountered at harvest time too, if you remember correctly. On the 20-inch stuff, it was it was very difficult. It got to the point, because we were going to straight cut it, it got to the point where we couldn't swath it. And it was really hard to straight cut even because it was just so light and fluffy. And the plants weren't uh, close enough together that it, it was hard to get it to stay on the table of the of the combine. Right. Any amount of wind would just blow it off. It was, it was t- you had to pick your day actually. Well, that, so we had our trials, our 30 foot by 400 foot trials, you know, that we're kind of talking about the the yield from, but we also had a a 10 versus 20 inch, or actually no, it was just 20 inch out on that one other field. Then we did like what, 60 acres or something. Yeah. yeah, And from what I remember from that one, it lodged so bad. Yeah. Right. Because it just has nothing to, you know, kind of leans on your neighbor. Yeah, you lean but on when me, it all went down, I know some of that was variety specific, but still, it, uh, there was a difference being that far apart. It yeah. didn't have anything to lean on, and when it did go down, it went, went down. down and then it's like, okay, well, what do we do? Well, we got to swath it. Well, yeah, you try and swath it, and you can't swath it. Okay, right. well, we got to straight cut it. Well, you know, any amount of wind that's blowing off the table, like how do you get it to go in the combine? Well, yeah, it's it was interesting. So I mean, on the. On the canola side, yeah, there's some of that factors there, but it was uh, yield wise nothing that year. So 21, we did it in 21 as well. Uh, what did we end up with here? We ended up we had a lower plant stand on 12 inch spacing versus 10. So that was a drier year, lower plant stand on 12 inch, and that might have had to do with just in competition, competition in the row, yep. right? So we we thinned it down. So now that year though, if you remember from our our seeding rate trials, anything in a dry year. It's been showing up. Lower plant stands has actually been creating higher yields. And what we saw that year was that the 12-inch spacing outproduced the 10-inch. This is in canola. Canola. Yes. This is still canola. Lower plant stands, bigger plants. Bigger plants, potential bigger root system, taps into more moisture down below, maybe more efficient. This is a theory, but These are theories, right? But we see it, whether it's... Whether we did it by uh, seeding rate, we lowered the plant stand. Whether we did it by nitrogen placement and you know, lowering the plant stand with you know burning off some. And now whether we did it with row spacing, lowered the plant stand uh, and still had a higher yield that year. So no matter what way we came to it, uh, the lower plant stand definitely uh, did it definitely outproduced. So so I thought that was a, that was an interesting one. So what's the what's the overall message i guess what are we thinking how would you 10? conclude that's how, my question to you Chris. how would i conclude i still think that in cereals 10 inch will not lose to 12 inch on the yield side of it right and i never is never lost it doesn't necessarily always win uh on a yield uh 
but there is, it, you know, it, it typically has a better plan stand. We just have less uh, competition there uh, in in the row. Uh, I think on the weed competition side of stuff, doesn't matter what crop it is, narrower spacing is going to have better competition, right? So it's would it be safe to say that 10 inch has more potential to out yield 12 inch? Yeah, definitely. Definitely you know, on it's never, it's never going to do worse than 12 inch. Yeah. But there is a potential that it can do better. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good way to, that's the way I kind of set it up. Yeah. Uh, Plus you get all the benefits of having quicker low, row closure and yep. yeah, all those other things with 10 inch. Uh, yep. So now on the flip side of that, again, there's, we understand there's equipment costs to that. There's horsepower requirements to that. There's trash flow management to that. You, you know, one thing we didn't talk about was stepping. Oh yeah, right. Stepping, which is the back row covering the front row, right? And so on narrower spacing, you'll have more potential for that. So there's no doubt there's some of those aspects that have to be considered. Um, but on cereals, I think there there is potential. On canola wheat uh, yield wise, I mean canola just branches out. I don't know if there's a big difference between ten and twelve, and, and maybe even wider than that. Uh, there was some lodging issues, though, as we went wider, and then there's weed competition. I mean, that's still a factor. And longer flowering periods, the there wider was long, you go. Yeah, no, that is that is right. Uh, it, it definitely did get a little bit longer on that one. Pulses, we haven't really done anything with pulses, uh, but to your point of, you know, more flow... Airflow? Airflow going through. Mm-hmm. Again, though, pulses are also the biggest challenge is weed competition. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, you know, we can... If we can spray for them, that's great. We can spray for fungicides too, right? So which which one's going to be the one you want to, I guess, give up? Uh, I suppose on the advantage side, you're going to have better weed competition if you go narrower, but you're going to potentially have more fungicide. If you go wider, you'll have less weed competition, but then potential for less fungicide then too, yep. right? So I think those are some of the things. Considerations you know, to consideration. consider. Yeah, considerations to consider. I like that. That's, mm-hmm. that's a, I patented that. It's a good one. Okay, well, I think with with that, I don't know, is there anything else that you could kind of think of or... or no, not off the top of my bald head at the moment. But. Well, then I guess we will... Uh, I guess we'll end it there in the conversation on, on row spacing. If you have any more questions, just you know, reach out, ask us. Uh, tune in to next episode, and we'll continue our chat on the, the agronomics of equipment, and uh, we'll get you growing. Mm-hmm.